Today's lesson is all about propagating plants, specifically by way of cutting. And today we're going to be discussing figs, but the same lesson applies for a lot of your other, other fruit trees on your property, such as grapes, pomegranates, citrus, and even your ornamental plants, such as roses, geraniums, and so much more. We hope you find this lesson informative and helpful and gets this year off to one of your best growing seasons ever. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and author of Saving the World with the Home Garden. And today we have the honor and privilege of being here with David and Priscilla Burke, aka the Fig Hunters. The Fig Hunter has discovered hundreds of varieties that trump the common varieties you'll find at the big box stores, such as the Green Cadota, Brown Turkey, and Black Mission Figs that most of us are familiar with. What the fig hunter has done is by collecting and propagating these thousands of wild figs and testing them year after year, sampling them, trying them, sharing them with the fig growing enthusiasts across the country, he has identified some of the best flavors in the fig world and we're proud to share that the fig hunter has made available to us as he's done for the last several years hundreds, upwards of thousands of the fig hunter variety fig cuttings with Ivory Organics now six free fig cutting annual giveaway where we basically give away figs the entire month of February in addition to making figs available with your purchases at ivyorganics.com. And I'll put the link to that video lesson that we co-taught on February 1st in the video description below. And you can also go to ivoryorganics.com for further details. Without any further ado, let me introduce David and Priscilla Burke. And thank you so very much for being with us. Thank you so much, Charles. Hey, everybody can follow our journey on YouTube at The Fig Hunter, on Instagram, and of course our Facebook channel, uh, which is all The Fig Hunter. And you can also find us at www.thefighunter.shop where you can purchase some of these specialty fig scions. Uh, we also have rooted stock there. Um, we do our fig hunter merchandise and there are food products as well as a specific page for propagation methods. So you can always look us up there and there's some links to Charles's Ivy Organic website directly from ours. Thank you, David and Priscilla, for the background on the fig hunter. And now let's delve deep into how to successfully root your fig cuttings or virtually any other plant cutting parts you can get your hands on and basically maximizing your success. What is the general best way to root your cuttings? Well, you could ask uh, a few people and they'll get different answers. But I can say after thousands and thousands of cuttings, now, this is by far the simplest and the most overall effective. So we're going to start out by um, showing you a branch. We went out and we collected these um, this morning. So this is this is one of our newer varieties. And um, we're going to take a cutting off of it. This is a, a larger cutting. So I always like to, even though it was just uh, about 20 minutes ago, I took this uh, cutting, uh, this branch off. I like to fresh cut it. It just makes sense to me. So I come up and each one of these spots here is uh, what's called a node or a bud spot. And that's where the roots are. So I'll cut that off. I'll come over and clean it up here a little bit. Now this is just because uh, we'll use a, um, there's different methods. I really like dip and grow. It has a sterilization method um, built right in. So by having alcohol. So where, I will clean this. I can, you know, clean this and wash this cutting to make sure there's nothing. Um, there's no bacteria or anything on it. When we send them out. So we will clean them for ourselves. I'll just take some of this right here. And it's a, actually a concentrate. So this 16 ounces will make what, like three gallons or something. And, but in this case, because I know do. that hundreds if not thousands of cuttings i'll just take that and uh because it's a concentrate too it's not going to hurt it to have it full strength and just brush it on so and i'll pay attention to brushing it on here there's little cuts right there just hopefully with it um soaking in so i'll take one or two of these more and 
There we go. I'll take a couple other cuttings here to do the same thing. And as we're going along, uh, so if you get your cuttings from Charles right now, they're going to come already with a rooting hormone on them. They already come pretty clean. So you're not going to want to do this method. But what you are going to want to do is make sure you, let me reach over here, document what varieties they are. Because you could take them out of the bag and if they're not marked, our, mark, our varieties will be marked, but if somebody else's aren't marked or labeled, I should say, then you could be like, what are they? So the next thing we'll do, now that we've done that, now that we've labeled these, is we'll mix your soil. Now, here's just some soil that we got from Home Depot. It has perlite and um, beet moss already mixed in it. We love recycling. This method is so easy because who doesn't go get um, even a cup of water? They stop by the local. Um, you get a fountain drink in a lot of places. And if you save the cup, you can recycle it for planting. What we're doing right now. And you don't want to compact the soil when you're filling it up. You want to like let it be fluffy. So <clears throat> you can kind of see it's kind of fluffy. So with the, and that's something what Priscilla was just saying is very important. A lot of times we learn the hard way that if you come in here and you can pack it like this, our kids used to, and they take this and then they try to shove that in. Got to make sure I know the right way, right? That won't go in. That is, I mean, that is down only about that far. You can see how far it went down. Well, but and if, it makes it difficult for roots to be able to make their way through it as well. Yeah. No. But if it's fluffy, and sometimes I'll keep it kind of on the side. Yeah. These are all just uh, tips and little hacks to making sure you end up with the thing. See how easy that is? So it's all the way to the bottom. Then you kind of turn it over and you can gently tap it. And there are two other things. The next thing that we'll do is we'll either put um, perlite on top because sometimes you have an issue with fungal mats, or you can put a little bit of sand. A little bit of sand on top. It also sand. It'll dry. It'll drain. The perlite will help drain, so you're not having the soil right next to the cutting up near the top the whole time. Where when you're watering, you you don't want wet soil when you're watering against. It or to rot by putting that draining, well draining uh, material near the top, it helps. One other thing is you don't want to go all the way to the bottom with your cutting. You want to keep it about, you know, about an inch up on whatever container you have. So something else that we could use too, because there, there's another thing on top of this is um, I'm playing with this here is taking. Because I'm already going to use Ivy Organics 3 in 1. I love it. We're going to use it in the orchard. But I've actually seen you know, it works. And um, it should, by all methods. If I now use a little bit on top, that cutting, so that you do not lose moisture from the cutting. And then um, gently have it a thinned out amount and brush it on the buds. The buds should break through. That will also kind of help keep the moisture in the cuttings. And again, we're talking, it'll use so little. So David and Priscilla, I appreciate you sharing your rooting medium of choice. Again, being a perlite slash peat moss mix. So one of the things I've learned in rooting cuttings is that I like working with things, perlite, which you've shared with us earlier, and then vermiculite. And I've got the bags right next to me. Again, so you can see the spelling. This here is perlite. You can see it looks like white snow. And then vermiculite is basically looks like powdered fool's gold. And what happens is they're basically, they're even though I say they're non-organic, they're still organic um, registered with Omri for, again, commercial organic gardening, as well as um, for backyard growers that want to, again, implement organic methods for growing the best food and the healthiest and, and minimal impact on the environment. And so perlite and vermiculite, basically, um, I like using them because they're more of like a sterile 
soil medium. And so that when I'm taking my cuttings, which in a way, um, once you cut it off the tree, it's, it's on the path towards dying. And we don't want to basically um, contaminate, obviously, exposed areas or any of the cutting with um, soil that's going to basically lead to um, mold or bacterial infection or anything else. And that's the reason that um, with all the cuttings you're going to get from Ivory Organics, what we're doing is we're taking our cuttings, we're then scoring them um, near the leaf node over here. So again, you can see before I've scarred it. And then now that I scar it right here, I basically scar right through the node. And what we're doing is we're increasing um, water absorption and we're also increasing the surface area for rooting. And what I'm going to do next is I'm simply going to dip it in a rooting powder. And you'll see it's got like a white tip. And then what we do next is we'll take a paper towel, spray it with some water, and it's really just two sprays. Again, we're not um, drowning the cutting. We're just adding moisture so that the cutting doesn't lose more moisture. And then we'll wrap this all together like so, and then insert it into our plastic bag so that the moisture is retained until the fig cutting makes its way to you. And so all of our fig cuttings are packed like so, and then labeled, obviously, as you explained at the very beginning, so that we don't forget what variety of fig cutting we have in here. And another exciting point about this year's giveaway is that we've got now over 75 quality fig varieties to share with you. Um, and again, we encourage all of you guys to learn more about this by, you can check out the February 1st, video that David and Priscilla Burke and myself um, did with the free annual fig cutting giveaway lesson that we published on February 1st, or you can go to ivoryorganics.com for further details on that. Um, so again, going back to the soil again, perlite, vermiculite, my preference is to mix the two together. Um, so it ends up being more of a 50-50 mix like this. So you can see the perlite and vermiculite are mixed. So I would simply take these two bags, mix them together. And the thing you'd want to do before you put your um, soil medium in the cup is, and you're not going to be able to see this, but I want to quickly demonstrate. What I've done is I've gone with my um, heavy duty scissors here, and I'm basically cutting holes at the very bottom so that if I were to pour water into it, water would pour directly out of it. And Again, here's my soil medium. Again, if I were to add water from the top, it would pass right through because of all the drain holes I've added at the bottom. And then what I'll do is take another cup that does not have holes at the bottom and use that to capture um, the water that I add if I'm watering from the top or if I'm watering from the bottom. I'd like to pass the table back to um, the fig hunters. And if you can share your experience with um, another common way of propagating figs, which is known as fig pops. And I know um, all of our fig cuttings come in these plastic bags. And I know there's a way that you can actually even use the plastic bag to now root your individual fig cuttings that you'll be receiving. Um, and if you can share um, with the audience, um, you know, how would you prepare a fig pop and how successful or not successful has that been for the fig hunter? So you got a revenge, you got a bag. Now, like anything, and thank you for bringing up, we didn't show that we could put drainage holes. Definitely put drainage holes. They're the key to success. Well, the same mixture that'll work in here will work in this bag. Again, you don't want it where it's too damp. You want to be able to kind of, you can see, just clump it a little bit. The fastest way to kill a fig cutting when it is enclosed is moisture, too much. But if you don't give enough moisture, they will not roof. So build this up in a bag like that. And um, now we'll take a cutting. This right here is, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's 455 Amen Citron, one of our most popular varieties, the variety that just doesn't exist. It's crazy. It's pretty easy. You'll stick it in this. Again, we're not trying to compact. 
there is what we've seen. So we're kind of loosening the soil up. Putting that near the bottom. Again, keeping it not touching the bottom, but up a good inch to two inches in this case, allowing the soil to probably surround it. And we prepared these cuttings the same way. I mean, and now you'll take rubber band and you will wrap it. I prefer to allow at least one bud to be exposed. The other ones could be below the surface. Sometimes that's where it's going to root. And we will wrap it once or twice here. And then we'll hold it down like this. And that gets rid of the excess of keeping that tight. What you'll have here is because of this bag is covering the top, it will do the same or do a similar way as a, the lid or the baggie. It will not allow this to dry out as fast right here. And it'll create a greenhouse. Sometimes you'll actually see, see roots spring from here. At a certain point in time, you might want to cut this back a little bit when you see any green foliage so it doesn't touch the plastic. And then you can really put this anywhere. You can put this on a shelf. You could put this someplace that's we recommend was about 70 degrees. So 65 to 70 degrees, sometimes up on a shelf. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the light as long as it's warm. So this method really works. You can put a bunch of them in a container. And um, okay. holes are very important with this too. Not, not a ton of them, but air holes. So you, it drains, it can dry, allows it to dry out a little bit. If this is completely dry, and you can tell is the weight as it dries out, you can gently put it in a little bit of water, let it touch the bottom where you put the holes in, it will come up just a little bit. You created, I mean, pretty soon, if we waited about five minutes, you'd actually see a little bit of condensation building up on the inside of the bag. So you don't have to water this method very often. It works. Uh, it's a great success. We're doing this in an easy, another easy way, not just like this, that takes up a little bit of, uh, very little space. It could be indoors. And um, I've seen high success. I really like a lot of perlite with this mix uh, when doing it this method. And um, I guess the downfalls are if you get the wrong mix, the wrong moisture ratio mix, unlike this method where we could just, within the first week and a half, we're gonna pop this, we're gonna remove this lid. We're actually gonna cut it off. We're gonna use scissors and cut the lid off and it's easy. So after the fig cutting starts growing roots, or starts thinking about growing roots, there's not a ton of moisture against the roots or trapped in here. So it will not rot the newly formed roots off the cutting. This, you're married to it per se. So you really have to get that mixture correct. Um, again, I, I tend to lean on the little bit of drier side because the moisture is again trapped other than the little bit of vent holes. I did say that, but it works. So both methods, and then you can even do it in water. Here are some cuttings because we're, we're doing a lot of grafting. And um, I put these in a little jar because that's what I had. And only we're talking about the pre-rooting, the cup here with a little bit of water. I seen it when it was about a week ago. I, I totally forgot about it. It was up on a shelf in the kitchen near the dishwasher, probably uh, added to the humidity in the uh, around it. And it was forgotten. Warm, it's a, it's a warm environment. So Pretty I noticed, nice. I don't know if you can see this, but there you go. So over here, and we've rooted in water too. Typically, you would put in water and cover it so it's not, um, it has no light. Again, this was just, 
I was going to use these for grafting. I put this in and then pile the soil around it gently, sprinkling it, I guess you should say. Try not to disturb these roots. And that's what we really talk about with fig pops. Any method, when they're rooted, you do not want to disturb these roots. This is what you're going to see in that, maybe if not, um, in some cases, even more. But just to show you how fragile that root is. I mean, if you just see, barely touched it, and it broke off. That is the downside to this method. Well, sometimes, well, we just showed you that the roots are really, really delicate. So when you go to up pot, if you're not careful, when you go to plant this, see, it just gently broke off. So the delicacy, other times like this was just, uh, it's been in water, pre-rooting, we talked about that, but you'll see where if you don't change the water regularly, they start to rot. And or then if the wood's too green. The wood is, uh, and this is a different, this is more of a late summer growth versus this was probably on a slower, older growing tree here. Yeah, that variety um, grows very slowly. So that that's it. I mean, well, you can see, I mean, if I would add at the end, I just cut off. That this has been in, you know, three inches of water. This has been in barely, well, I put a little extra water, but you can see the line right here. It's been in roughly three quarters of an inch of water. So it's just barely have any water. And that's what's encouraging where it's rooting. It's rooting up higher and it's growing down towards the water. The humidity level is so high right there at a little above water that it grows down but overall water can be used so what we talked about which you might end up getting in your baggies that show up at your doorstep is the pre-rooting i don't know if you can see these little bumps here it's the lenticles maybe i can find something else so a lot of time that uh we will yeah there's some right here that there's a little little white bumps the thought the fig cutting or the cutting, thinking about and starting the rooting process. So water can help speed that process up. But at the same time, see how that's kind of yucky? Knowing that that tip is sacrificial. I already know that tip's sacrificial. So overall, consistently, I would say either your way or your method or what has worked for us successfully. Um, well, the, I think too that um, some of it has to do with how lignified the cutting is. And most people will be using um, fairly green wood or first year lignified. And those ones do tend to um, not really be able to handle the moisture as well as like these ones that he accidentally left in water those ones were more of a gray wood, a hardwood, so they're more lignified. They don't seem to um, get mush mushy as fast. So the last mind-blowing thing is, what if I told you you could take a cutting that you're going to grow? Heck, this could be one of the capper figs that Charles has. Mm -hmm. And you can, the method we're going to be using is cleft grafting. And I can very quickly, very easily. You're taking a terminal end. Oh, I'm taking a, sorry, I'm taking a terminal end here. And this is Amen Citron. Set this in there about like that. Again, um, the big thing about cleft grafting is you want to have the cambium layer line up on the sides. You wrap it real quick with some, uh, we like parafilm. And then our go-to is, after we do that. Electrical tape. It's black electrical tape. The reason why, I know Charles loves fishing twine, but the issue is I forget. I'm honest, I forget. And I've even tried rubber bands and forgotten. But black electrical tape, there's some out there in our uh, 
in our grow tent right now or in our greenhouse that still have a little bit of electrical tape from the middle of last summer where I grafted. And they're okay because electrical tape stretches, see? And then when we're doing it, or you could use, and this right here, um, chip button, where you just take that off and take one off right here. And this is Corazon de la Bahia which is another amazing, amazing fig that just doesn't, I mean, it's just this red, beautiful, complex berry figure. And stick that on this, making sure that side lines up right there. I like the tuck method where you tuck it, sometimes on the top too, but you just line up the side, let me see here. See, that might be, that's a little bit bigger, but it's still going to be fine because what we'll do then, again, for pillar film, we wrap this to seal in that moisture so those chips, those grass do not dry out. And then to help ensure that grows, I'll use black electrical tape and that will keep that chip graph or that will keep all the graphs tight, tight, tight as they start to heal. Then we can really easily dump our soil in there. Of course, we got to drain holes in. I'm spilling soil everywhere here. But there we go. I put this through the top of, the, oh, sweetheart, do you have a lid? Yep. So we heard about this method a while back and we tried it, it was about a, last year, mm -hmm. last, uh, I think it was last, last November, and it worked. So at the same time, especially with something that has more than one node, now that you're starting out with your, um, they call them um, fruit salad trees. So right here, I have a multi-graft at the beginning. And my other cuttings, because that would have came with, in this order, it came with two or three cuttings, the roots, uh, cutting use for the rootstock. I can plant these other two cuttings too and have, I mean, I'm not losing anything from taking the tip off of one and the bud off another. But what I am gaining is just a different way to propagate. And it works. I mean, as you can see right here, those are the two methods I used. And at the same time, we're rooting one in a baggie and it worked. So why not? So just for clarification again, that um, fig you just shared with us that's growing is one that you rooted and grafted at the same time. Yes. Just go into the fact that, again, figs root that easily, and they just want to live as long as you follow these simple steps. And hopefully, you know, you've gained some insight to, again, maximizing your success in propagating by way of cutting grafting which again was a bonus um on this lesson is another way of propagating um plants where again if you already have a fig or um if you're wanting to create as you mentioned a fruit salad tree or a cocktail fruit tree as it's also sometimes known you can graft on one citrus tree other varieties of citrus on a fig tree you can graft other varieties of figs on an avocado tree you can graft other varieties of avocados and so forth. And the benefits of grafting multi varieties on a single tree is in the footprint of just one tree. You can enjoy a lot of different flavors. You can enjoy those flavors over an extended period of time as different varieties ripen in, in different seasons. Um, and it just, it just further adds to the enjoyment of gardening um, as you um, further develop your gardening skills from year to year. And we hope this lesson becomes a part of that for you as well. Something I want to share with you as well, in and hopefully we can highlight as well, is now transplanting. We've demonstrated examples of fake cuttings that have now rooted, and now we're basically, you know, having these um, figs in these small containers. And now that they've rooted and they've um, sprouted, what do we do and how do we maximize the health and, and success of getting those figs um, now into the garden or into the next container? Um, for those of you that don't know, figs are in the same family as the ficus tree or the genus species is known as the ficus benjamina. 
Last year, I announced the fifth free big cutting giveaway in San Diego in Balboa Park. And I stood in front of um, what's known as the Morton Bay Fig. Um, the genus species is Ficus macrophilia compared to the edible figs that we're sharing with our fig cutting giveaway, which is known as Ficus carica. And again, all of them are in the Ficus family. And what I want to share with you is, again, and most of us, at least that are, you know, beginner to intermediate gardeners know that if you have a ficus plant indoors and you move it from one window to the next, even in the same room, um, that plant will sometimes stress out and die. Or if it doesn't die, it may drop all of its leaves. So there's some subtle stresses that sometimes, even though it's getting the right water and the right nutrients and the right everything else, just simply moving the plant can be a stress that can contribute to the death of the plant. So um, David, I'm hoping you can start off and then I'll add a couple more points. If you can start off with how do we now that we've successfully rooted the cutting, how do we now make sure that it succeeds when we up pot it or now um, plant it into our backyard orchards? Okay, that's pretty, um, <laughs> well, we, we can talk about that. You wanna... uh, oh, no. I mean, figs, once they're established, are amazingly hardy and take stress pretty well, like fruit bearing figs, um, you know, once they're full size trees with a solid root system. But when they're at this stage, they are much more fragile than most people realize. Um, and, and that's generally when you are going to lose them is once you've rooted it, the up potting to a larger pot. Um, I think we've lost more cutting that way than I care to mention. <laughs> so I guess this is one of the most fragile ways you'll see. We tell people that contact us, when do I up pot a tree or a fig cutting? And our answer will always be the same when it has a complete root system. But that will be a little bit different than this, which over a course of a, a, a significant while, it can have a root system like that. I mean, this is out of a, a, a square pot. But typically, when you're dealing with cuttings that we're planting right now in one of these containers, that's over a whole season. This you will not. You will see roots in there throughout there. Now, what do you do? You undo the rubber band gently. You will not try to pull the tree out. You will gently, gently take a razor or scissors and cut the bottom, cut the sides, and you have your larger pot, you will have a hole in the container. Like if this bin were the container that I wanted to use, I would lay this in there, at whatever position. And then after it's in there, I would gently, gently, to the word I keep saying is gently, gently put the soil around it and leave it alone. Would you say the same way for this, except for what? Well, uh, yeah, you would cut down the sides. Um, I would, I would say you have to be far more gentle with that than this. And I think that the reason for that is this has structure. Like the roots are building a structure, much like that the square pot, the four by nine, where it builds that structure within it because you have solid sides for the most part. But this, you. It's got so much free play because it's a bag and everything. The roots don't ever really build that solid structure. And they have a tendency to, like David was showing with the water on those cuttings, the, they have a tendency to break a lot easier. And they, they don't like the stress. So if you don't really want to try to disturb the roots, if you can avoid it. Whereas, you know, like most people, you, you buy tomato certs at the store and they're really root bound. And so you break the roots apart and you stuff them in the ground. These, you want to avoid touching those roots as much as you can possibly avoid touching those roots. Those are all fantastic tips. And I really appreciate it. I don't think I've ever heard anybody saying when it comes to those um, baby fig starters to be gentle on those roots. And you did say it multiple times. Um, and I think that's a very helpful lesson. And I love how you compared it to the tomato root bound roots. And yes, you typically rip off those bottom five, 10%, you know, the roots, 
that are root bound and, and the tomato seems to absorb that shock without any issue at all. But um, these baby plants need to be babied a little bit more. Um, other helpful tips I know we also discussed is that you can also, as you acclimate them, you can transition them, for example, under a bench, especially if you're starting them indoors and then taking them out, um, put them in a position that maybe gets about an hour, not more than maybe two hours of morning light for the first few days, maybe first week. And then um, basically, you know, transition them as it finally finds its place into your garden where it's going to get the six to 10 hours or more of light, especially as it goes into the summer, where it's going to be getting 14 hours of light. Here we are in Los Angeles and even up um, in Northern California, um, starting June of, you know, the first day of summer, June 21st. So longest light day of the year, we're going into the hottest days of the year thereafter. Um, and that's a lot of stress on the plant. And one of the ways to also help with the acclimation of your plant from indoor to out, or even if it's from outdoor to out and you're up potting or transitioning is to, again, whitewash. And you can actually use a ready to use spray, or you can make your own spray using this little pint size can you can make about 20 to 25 of these spray bottles. This little pint size can makes five gallons of foliar spray that you can now spray the entire structure, the leaves, the fruit, the whole structure, and it'll help keep your plant. Um, it basically serves as an anti-transparent, helping the plant better retain moisture, reduces transplant shock, and helps with the whole acclimation process as well. And this is something you can do on your figs. You can do it on your citrus. You can do it on your avocados. You can even do it on your tomatoes, squash, pepper, and so much more. Um, all of your plants can benefit from um, basically helping to curb the weather extremes while also helping to keep pests, especially off of your newest and youngest and smallest plants protected as it also has um, the three-in-one product, essential oils, which include castor and cinnamon and clove, um, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint, oils that naturally organically repel most pests and rodents, in addition to diatomaceous earth, which is another insect repellent added benefit. So um, those are the things that you're going to do to help get your plants off to an excellent start as those roots get established, whether it be as you're up potting into the next container or into the in-ground garden to become a part of your backyard orchard. So the, the great thing about the three-in-one plant guard, if you followed any of our videos or any of our content, is the fact that our daughters love to get dirty. So they're out there and they love helping. Uh, from the very beginning, they've always been a part of our venture. And um, they can get this all over themselves and their clothes. And it's what? Do you worry about it, Mom? No. I don't have a worry about it because I know they're not getting anything not like that's toxic. <laughs> and that's what's so wonderful. Plus, it does a great job when it's up here in 115, 116. Mm -hmm. It protects our trees. And that's what matters in our family. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Thank you so very much. And uh, again, thank you for all the enormous value and content that you've shared with all of us that are interested in propagating plants, specifically figs, but any other plant cuttings, um, these lessons can hopefully be of help to making this your best growing year. And if you want to share with the audience, how can they best learn from the fig hunter, David and Priscilla and family, um, more valuable tips going into the growing season. Well, follow us on uh, Instagram, please. If you see this and you're watching this, click over there and follow us. It, it, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel and, of course, any of our Facebook. But we have a couple other products that um, we have available. What is it about the fun meters? Um, so when you purchase through our website, fakehunter.shop, every order gets a fun meter included. Um, and we're hoping that everybody who receives one will go out and take a picture of them with their fun meter on. So on our website, the fakehunter.shop, we're going to be adding fun meters for purchase under the apparel section, where you can also get shirts and hats, which are pretty awesome. And we'd love for anybody who gets a fun meter to go out and take a photo of yourself having fun with your fun meter. So like we've seen you do with other products, if you share a fun meter photo, you might just get a, receive a package of something special in the mail. And then what did you get this year for us to make it easy to contact? Um, so we have a toll-free number that anyone can call. Um, so whether you're here in the U.S. or if you're international, because I know that was one of the um, the things that we had had people reach out to us about. You could call us toll free 
844-344-4687. It's 844-FIG Hunter, basically. Um, and if you don't get David, you'll get me. It rings to both of us. And we're here to answer any questions. So. And the other thing we'll be doing is a Zoom format meeting where we'll be doing little 15 minute. You can contact us, set up a meeting. We'll be doing 15 to 10 to 15 minute educational, such as um, videos, whatever that you want. So the person will be um, saying, hey, I need some help with this. And uh, showing how we use events, including, including, and that's just the big thing here because we sent the capper figs, including how to hand pollinate your figs and have the perfect fig. So. Mm -hmm. You guys are awesome. Thank you so very much for, again, all the invaluable information you've shared with us. You're talking about caprification, which is another hour long lesson. And, and maybe one day soon we can get into that. It's always a pleasure having you here on the Ivory Organic platform and stage and looking forward to the next time that we get to have you here as well. All of the social media links that you shared, in addition to the phone number, if you want to even call into the Fig Hunters, will all be in the video description below for your convenience. So you can um, simply click it and get connected and continue learning um, the Fig Hunter way. Um, as always, thanks for being a part of our growing community. I encourage you all, especially the new people that have not yet subscribed, be sure to subscribe and hit the push bell notification. And I'm gonna be including the link to the Fig Hunter YouTube channel for your convenience at the end of the video for you to also click and subscribe to their channel as well. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.